Welcome back to the second part of this Chanel lipstick tutorial workshop. I mean, workshop might be the better word for the second video because in the first video it was a step-by-step -step tutorial. Now it is more a little bit more individual, like we are doing this together. I show you my approaches and my process and you can follow me, but I guess in the end you will have a little bit of a different version compared to mine, because I cannot exactly explain where am I placing a light or how I'm rotating it, like giving you the degrees or whatever. It is a very, like a very dynamic process, so you will have a little bit of a different version in the end, but that is totally fine. Please excuse a few minor mistakes, like my video portray mode was covering the shader editor, I'm sorry for that, I wasn't able to undo this, and also a few mistakes takes in wording. I wrote a few notes into the video so you can follow through this. So that being said, please hit the like button and the subscribe button and this little tiny little dingy 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 little ding dingy little bell, you know, and then we can start with the video. If you have not yet downloaded the advanced light maps, please check out the link on Gumroad. I promise you, you won't regret it and you will be able to follow me through this tutorial because in order to follow me through this tutorial, you will need those. Thank you very much. And now, let's get it rolling. Let's insert the first of the advanced light maps and I will start with the rim lights. For that, I use the images as planes import and I take a fine line, a fine line for the rim lights. So as soon as it is imported, I go into the object shader, object mode for the shader again. Here we have this, this is the images as planes standard setup. And what we now need to change is we need to put the color into the emission and we need to add a color ramp. So shift A, S and type in color. You see the color ramp popping up. Connect this with between those two. Also, you know, this goes into the emission. This is just for if you want to control the light later on, if you want to make it brighter or shift it a little bit, you have a little bit of control with the with the color ramp. And what I also need to do is to copy, uh, to duplicate this one and paste it into the alpha channel but i want to have the color as alpha channel and i take yeah this one's already connected to the to the alpha and now i just take this over to like point one like this um, this is just to blend out the black areas which enables me to stack multiple lights behind each other and they will shine through each other so now let's take this one out of this black area at the back. Mm. Make it big like this and I have to rotate it by 90 degrees so it is upright. Now I look through the camera and what I now need uh, in order for organization of my screen I need to have another viewport for my um, or the organi organization of my lights. So I have one to check if the lighting is okay. And I have one uh, that I need to, yeah, move my lights and reposition them. All right, I um, increased the emission strength to five for starters. And now what I try to do is I want to have a very nice line, shining line on the rim and also a little bit of gradient that goes into the product just a little bit. So for that I will go into the preview mode from Eevee. So I see the light in the plane. Yes, and now I will make it bigger, especially in the Z axis. So I hit S and Z and scale it up. And now I move it a little bit to the right, and now you see it's it's coming to life. You see how the the light reflects in the in this area. And now the only thing you need to do is to find the right spot, rotate it, reposition it until you like the feeling of this light. I will have to want to place it a little bit more up because. Um, I will also get some highlights on these lines. 
I will not have them if I have this if I place the slide very low. Yeah, I want to have nice highlights also in these parts, so I will place the light a little bit more into the air. And now I will rotate it a little bit towards the product. And if I hit G and Shift Z, I can reposition the light only on the X and Y axis. So, and now let's try to find a spot that looks good. This is what I want for here. If you want to uh, change the... This is very close, this light. Might be a little bit too close. But you can make it visible for the camera later on. This is also very comes in very handy. If you go to the object properties and you uncheck the camera, it will be invisible. This is also very handy. Uh, you can decide if you want it or not. Uh, yeah, just find one spot where it looks very good. I want to I want a very hard highlight on this very edge. I think I think that is it. Be very careful. I guess this is good. A little bit. I make it now a little bit bigger. Uh, only in the Y axis, and I, I change orientations to normal. Hit S and Y in this case, and I can scale it up only in the uh, you know in the Y axis, depending on how the the light is placed. You know, it takes the it takes the direction of the light or the normal of the light. Oh, whatever. I can't explain it. <laughs> Just do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. It's already good. I will uncheck this. I don't want to see the, the light in the camera. And the next step is I will copy this light over to the other side because I also want the highlight on the other side. So hit Shift D, copy this one over, um, make it face towards the product. So hit R and Z and do the same thing. Take it down a little bit. bigger um, also what, what you should do if you duplicate the light you should also make sure to have duplicated the material um, because if you change the emission strength on this one and you have not duplicated the material, it will also change the value from this other light that you worked on previously and that would be a little bit mm, tedious, right? Because you would mess up your previous settings. So make, make sure to hit this little 2 and then you have a separate material and then you can increase the emission strength without affecting the other one. you want to of course but I want to since I want to make this beautiful maybe that's it there's a lot of tricking really I mean lighting is not a I wish I could give you a one two three step guide but it is not that easy it is it has a lot to do with tricking try and error finding the right thing for yourself you know like meeting the expectations of your client whatever there's a lot of a lot of things that play a role in this whole thing so for me it's a matter of taste i just want to make it look good and i i can't really describe when i know it is perfect or when i know it is good it is a matter of taste so at some point i just think hmm, i think it is okay no i think it looks good it's like as if my eye is satisfied at one point and then I let it go and it's not very um, you know it's not unusual that when I already decided where a light has to be uh, later on I go back and tweak it again because another light comes in yeah, so don't don't become disheartened when you have this feeling of this takes forever or so because in my projects I yeah experience this very often that I have to spend a lot of time on lighting when I want to have a very good result Okay, so enough talking, let's continue. I think it is okay. I think that is really okay. Maybe it's a little bit overblown and I will take the strength down maybe to eight. 
That's still a little bit too heavy. It's a six. Yeah. Okay. That is very good. So two lights from the back. I will also duplicate this light one more time because I want a small stripe on the front of this. So and in order to achieve that, I will also have to rotate it towards the product and position it nearby. And yeah, let's see. Yeah, that looks quite good. It's also very interesting if you try, let me try to explain this. In a photo studio, I see this very often that a photographer has a product, like a product here, and he's not placing the light there, but he is rotating the light like this. So the light spot is in the middle. And so in the, in the product, it becomes smaller because less stuff is reflecting, of course. The light is shining into that direction. The product is here. Then there is another kind of gradient appearing in the product then uh, compared to when he would just throw the light straight onto that product as I do here. Um, check this out. This is what I mean. This is a little bit difficult to describe, but you see, I rotated this so it is almost flat, you know? And now you see the, that the right side of it is much smaller than the left side of it. And I think I like this. I really do. It's a little bit different than I planned to do it, but I like it. And so I will keep it. So it's a very nice effect. Yeah, it looks very cool. Also, the positioning of lights is very important. Man, there's a lot to say about lighting. Which is why I want to do an online course, by the way. <laughs> if you are interested, please sign up for the waiting list. <laughs> it will be awesome. I think we will cover these things, but a lot more. So you see, <laughs> it already starts to be a mess, but the result is not too bad. A little bit smaller. So, okay, like that. Very good. So now the next light that I want to use is the artistic light. So again, I go into the importer images planes, go into the advanced light maps, pick the artistic spot, Throw it into the scene, pull it out, uh, make it big. So, and same approach. I use the color ramp. I use two color ramps actually. Connect the color to the factor of this and put this into the emission shader and crank the emission up to five or to eight. And here we go. This is our beautiful artistic light and i will have to put this slider to the left pretty much in order to maintain a lot of your light information ah i will uncheck the camera uh, object properties i will uncheck the camera for the ray visibility because we want to place this actually in front of the camera so i'll increase it to five and i would say i'm it should be all right we see uh, maybe I can go with this. One thing that we miss now is we don't have a real rim light any longer. Let me check if I can place this rim light a little bit more behind. Yeah. I think a real rim light should be on the rim. So I put it back a little bit more, but I make it a little bit more big. Yeah. Okay. So we now have four lights, right? We have two rim lights, left and right, two fine lights from the advanced light maps. We have one light that's coming directly from the front to highlight this little edge. And we have one spotlight coming from the side gradiating over to the what's the middle and now is the question do we want to have a light for this side as well or do we make this um, little rim light bigger so it uh, shines into this product on this side a little bit more i will try the last option mm -hmm. i don't like this idea 
So that is why I will introduce another light in order to light this part up that is black now. We'll take another of this from this spot and place it over to the right side. Like this. Um, check the duplicate the material, decrease the light to one. And try to make this looking good. Which is what we always do. Try to make things look good. Yeah. Well, it's better here, but up there it's not very good. I'll make it bigger and put it more to the background. Oh, And as I said, don't become mad. It needs some patience, but that is okay. Take your time. Don't try to rush through it, because it will not look good. Yeah. For me, this is it, I would say. The rest comes in post-production for 3D render. This is this is very nice. So one last thing I might be wanting to do is duplicate another spotlight up into the air and have one light shining from above. Can be nice. Uh, you see the difference? It's a fine light over there. And a very subtle light over there. Super subtle. I mean, like, super subtle. But it is there. It is existing. Get smaller like this one. Yeah, that's good. And now let's try to reorganize it. Hmm. I don't know. No, no. I don't want... I, I want to have the shadow. I don't want to light it up. I only want to have a little bit of a reflection inside the... Ah, let me rotate it a bit. So you see, I, actually, this is a tutorial uh, which I want to guide you step, step by step through it. But it is actually f almost impossible for me because it is like a tweaking experience. <laughs> So I invite you to to try it, try it out. Just tweak your lights, try to find a good position. But, so this is very subtle, but I keep it. I like this little edge, little edge light, very, very subtle. And it makes it look very nice. And I'm happy with this so far. Okay, very good. So this is our first light setup. The light setup for the main product. No. I place this into a collection, number one lights. And yeah, if I take it out, you see there's nothing left. And so now I can do this with the second set, which is this set. And I will do the very, very same thing. I will start with a fine light and for that I take one of these duplicate them and then I add them to a new collection lights number two lights 
here we go make sure it's a separate material and now yeah peek through the camera let's look where we can place our little highlight light Also try to do it like this. Yeah, what I like is like rim lights, emphasizing edges, and the fine light is so nice because of this little gradient, this little spilling light. It always looks very soft and yeah. Very precious. Um, yeah, I will put it into this like that, maybe. Okay, then I will put this over to the other side. Reorganize it. I will just zero out my rotations. Um, just press N, then you can. Uh, select these three parts and zero out the rotation and then you can start over so for that i will need this Uh, increase this. I increase the, the alpha map even more. Oh. Oh. Now I will, oh, maybe like this. Looks good. Yeah, I would almost say this is it. I don't need more. It's a nice rim light. It's a nice gradient on the, on the surface. We have a nice gradient over there. It's brighter. Here it is darker. It's a nice line over there. It's actually, it is okay as it is. I think I don't have to tweak it any longer. Maybe a little bit of a highlight on this logo. Maybe. Um, I import another. Uh, oh, I take the it is export again. Yeah, set it up quickly. Color ramp. You can also put the base color simply to black. Here we go. smaller yeah here it is here we go very subtle very small yeah that looks cool but why is it is intersecting with the other light i think so either you can take it back or ah this is very this is ah. I don't like it. This is annoying when, you know, the, the light is also reflecting on the, the cap of this one. I only want to reflect it in there. 
these things are annoying, you know. Maybe I will do it like this. It looks a little bit more like it is a wanted effect. Yeah, I think that is kind of okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's simply hard to avoid this, but I think if it is there, it is it is okay. So it comes it comes from the bottom. That's okay. That looks also very good. Looks also very precious. All right, and let's me let me reduce it even more. Not three, maybe increase it a bit. All right, that's good. That's perfect. Now I uncheck the camera visibility, and we have our second light set, which is very good. And I only needed three lights. That's cool. So three lights go into the second light setup, and now. Of course, we need a light setup for the plane. And for that, I think about only using artistic spots. Number three, lights. Artistic spots, make sure it is copied, duplicated. And now we go with the five, make it bigger. And I un I make them invisible, so I only have beautiful reflections inside of my metal. But you know, the thing is, what, what I try to do now is I will try to place multiple spotlights in these areas in order to create many nice gradients and also like you see it there very subtle highlights on the little bevel edges this is the goal and this again is is something that you can always only uh, achieve by trying tweaking starting over and stuff this is like uh, inevitable so i think this is nice when i place it there the first light, then I could duplicate it, place the second light over there, rotate it a bit. Oh. It's a little bit smaller. Duplicate the material, make it maybe a little bit stronger, but not too strong. Seven. All right. What is that? Ah, it is reflecting inside of the... Ah, this is something that I don't want. So for that, um, I will change the displacement a little bit. I will decrease the strength to 0.35. Or to 0.3. Yeah, to 0.3. I think... There is no reflection going on over there. I can also try to keep it at 3.5 and then um, playing around with the size a bit. Like this, I think is okay. This is this is better. So I don't have the reflection inside this, um, this plane. All right, the other thing is I don't. I can hardly see the in, imperfections. I want to increase them a bit, so I crank them up to zero point zero one, which makes them visible. You see this? I will invert it because I want them to be in. Yeah, looks better. I also have to increase it over there, but that is good. Yeah, okay. And I also want to increase the bevel edge a bit. 64 samples and make it a bit bigger so there's more light catching inside of these, inside of these edges. Okay, I think that is 
that's much better. Yeah, I would do it like that. So now, uh, yeah, let's move these lights around. Try to find a nice, a nice illumination. I like this already. It's looking quite good. This is beautiful for this bottom parts. So nice. It's actually not, not that bad to have smaller lights. This is simply trial and error. I have no concept for this. I really can only say to you, try it out. Try to find lights that look good. This is really very experimental. It's a cool thing with modifiers. You can change them later on. Treat them to your liking. I also could decide whether I want more triangles or less. All these opportunities are still there. I mean, I could continue tweaking this forever, of course. The strength of the displacement map is also plays also a very big role. But, but I have to stop now because this takes forever otherwise. So you, you could, of course, you could continue um, finding the right spots, finding the right lights, um, finding something that looks good. For me now, I would say I'm I'm done. So what I will do now in the next step, of course, I will render out every single part like this one as it is um, with the other lights in, um, set to invisible. Um, let's do this for one set together and then I will skip this part because it is kind of self-explanatory um, and you can do it on your own. So I will do it now for this part that I've just created. Um, I have this plane, this has to be rendered, and I have this light setup. The other light setups will be invisible, as well as the product setups. Right, so for now it would be okay, but I also want to have a transparent background, and for that I go into these um, settings up there, render properties, and under film you can hit transparent, and then you can render out this part with an alpha channel. Let's have a look into the into our paths. I could insert some depth of field. That is something I would like to do. So I will have a mist um, layer. This is already checked. So in order to adjust it, go to the world settings, the world properties, and under the mist path, you can set the distance. And for that, we need to change the render pass view to the mist view and here if you now tweak this 25 meters might be a bit too much let's say like four meters up to 11 put these two into the scene in order to see what is going on and now we just need a little bit of uh, like a contrast if it is contrasty then we are able to create a yeah, depth of field in Photoshop later. That is why I need this. Okay, looks good. So we can go back to combined. I will render out the, the plane and the, the third light. Great. Save. And simply hit F12. So it's finished my first render. What the f*** just happened? Okay, I, did, I made a mistake. I guess this was the mistake. Okay, after having rendered every single set individually, I will also have to render the whole scene one time again. It is not important which light setup is on right now. It's just important to have one scene with all the object in it for the mist path. That is why I just hit the render button one more time. And with all the objects visible, so we have this mist path. 
All right, let's do some Photoshop work. I have all my layers loaded up. Here you see uh, this is the overall path, this is the mist path, this is the main product, the plane and the product set two. And this is the order that I will set them up, these three at first. And at first I will insert a background, which I can do with Control, Shift and N in order to create a new layer. Place it into the scene, pull it back down um, at the bottom of all layers and then hit Alt and Backspace. Yeah. Hit D at first, X and then Alt and Backspace. So you can fill the background with white or you, uh, you um, hit Control I in order to inverse it because I think it's better to work on the dark background. And it might be the first interesting thing to insert a little bit of a background. I would like to have a little bit of a glow around the products. So I will create a new layer over the background layer. So hit Control Shift and N again. And now uh, hit B for brush, right click. I will choose um, a normal brush and make it very big like 2000 for example. Now decrease the flow to 3% and choose a dark bluish or maybe I don't take color in it. No, I won't take color in it for now. This will be added later. So like a gray color, maybe a little bit of blue, a tint of blue, just like this. And then I start to paint it in. Maybe I will have to increase the flow to 5%. And then I just start to paint it in around the product so we have a little bit, so we highlight it a bit and we set the focus onto that product and also the black is not that that intense and aggressive in the background. Also there a little bit, not too much, just so it is yeah, looking nice. I think this is, this is already okay. All right, so we have a background that looks good. So for now, let's start with the main product. What I can see right now is that this one is actually a little bit better illuminated than this one. I think I have chosen a better light. I should have placed a little bit more light on the front of it, I think, um, which I could have done with increasing the size of the um, artistic spotlight or increasing the intensity, the emission strength. Anyways, now it is as it is, and I will try to fix this uh, with the camera raw filter at first, but I also think that I have to put a little a masked curve onto this point and retouch this area, but we will do this in a second. At first go to filter and camera raw filter. So, and now go to the basic, and what I do always is adjust the exposure a bit, in this case, I will increase it a little bit, um, decrease the highlights, increase the shadows. Yeah, it's a good starting point. A little bit more white and a bit more black, but be very careful with this slider. So, okay, I think that is almost enough. Maybe a little bit more exposure. And that is okay. Take this in. Yeah, for now it is okay. So let's go to the second set. This one, uh, I have, um, yeah, I, I want to have the, the triangulated plane at the top. You know, it's easier to work with these. Maybe, you see this, there's a nice highlight. I think I will take this over in the end, but for now I will leave it as is and I don't think there's much tweaking necessary for this one. I like it very much. But I go also into the camera raw filter and we'll try to adjust it a bit. I increase the exposure a little bit and highlights. It's always a good idea to turn the highlights down a bit and the shadows up a bit. It makes it a little bit more defined and as well as the whites and the blacks. But apart from that, there's not much to add, I think. The texture gives uh, more details in the in the roughness maps and stuff, but I also don't want that. I think it is good as is. Uh, this is okay as it is for now. And now let's do this. Um, I want to have this highlight on top of the layer of the plane. So I would hit L 
and now you try to take this line out of this layer very carefully only the line you just hit control and j and now you have turned the selection into a new layer which you can see here and now if you put this below the layer of the plane you have this little highlight area over over on top and yeah you keep it so now you can play around with the layer blend modes maybe screen is a good idea or uh pin light no not really i think lighten is okay lighten is good uh, yeah to to get rid of this little you know this little cut there uh, insert a, a mask with this symbol and then go into the brush again right click make it smaller uh, in, increase the flow and opacity and then start with with black color you can carefully paint along this 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 edge in order to get rid of this little strange cut thing yeah like this just to make it look a little bit better and maybe to blend this out so it is not so obvious that this is pasted into it okay nice little edge maintain that looks good that is okay for the first part so now i would like to insert more light as i said before and for that i will also use a curve so click on this little symbol and add a curve and now you put you click into the middle and drag it up a bit and also down there a bit to decrease the contrast now when this is selected you can hit ctrl and i in order to inverse the layer mask and then you hit b again scale it up a bit you can also do this with ctrl alt and right click and then you drag the mouse right and left you can you can make it bigger and smaller and now you start to paint this in this new layer decrease the flow a bit and try to get more light into the places where i haven't been able to put enough light into yeah i think that is that is okay no careful be careful with this yeah apply this as a layer mask so the light is not spilling over into the background as you see here you have this layer mask as i said hovering between those uh, layers and hit alt and click then you have a layer mask that only is only affecting this layer comes in very handy i think that is that is getting better definitely so one thing that i notice is that i forgot to place a light on this right side as you see this is completely dark i can do this with a curve so let's insert a curve and uh, make it very bright and pull up the left corner button a little bit like this That should work So now you invert it by control I and you go into the brush again Hit B for the brush make it bigger or smaller as you need it And then you paint in white with when you hit the button X you can switch black and white and when you paint white the mask will reveal what is beneath and so, ah, and of course, click and make it a layer mask. So, and if you now start to paint in, you see, yeah, there's coming some light into it. Amazing, right? You can just fake it in there. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. Yep, like that. Very, very nice. Yeah, this is looking better but um i accidentally also lit up this one this part over there so i have to paint black into it 
And for that, I choose a, a hard brush, reduce the hardness a bit, and increase opacity and flow. And now I'm very carefully paint over this, this edge. Yep, that is okay. And I also affected this side a bit, but I think I like it. It's not too bad. And maybe I will reduce it a bit. For that, I choose a soft brush and reduce the opacity to 20% and then, yeah, three times. I think that's okay. What I would like to have also is a little bit more contrast in this area. For that, I create another curve. Actually, I do everything with curves, most of for the most part. Take it in the middle, pull it down a bit, um, pull up this this thing just a slightly bit. It just looks a little bit more natural. Invert it, Control I, take the brush, paint in white, opacity 100%, flow 5%, and then go in very subtle, very carefully. Don't overdo it. Also this side. So, yep, just a bit more contrast. Yep. So here, a bit more contrast. Yep. Okay. Maybe also in this area, more contrast. Yeah. And over there as well. And maybe on this side too. Mm -hmm. Before and after, I think it adds a little bit more dramatic light to it. I don't like this reflection in here. Uh, if this would be a client job, I definitely would get rid of this. And also this one does not look very good. So I would, I would do this, yeah, let's do this. You take the set two, this one, yeah, right? And then you add a new layer, an empty layer with a control shift and N. And then you use the S tool, the, uh, the, the button S for the stamp clone tool or the clone, clone stamp tool, right? And you use like a brush with the only difference that you have to choose a source when you start using it. And for that, you can hit the Alt button click somewhere and you will stamp this part over to the side. It's a very simple and nostalgic tool in Photoshop I would say it's it's there from the very beginning, I would say. Okay, so, and I reduce the hardness a bit and I start stamping these things. And important is that you choose current layer and below. So it's not affected by the layers that are over it. For example, the, um, the curve layer. And then you just start stamping. Reduce the flow a bit more. If you hold shift, you can stamp lines, straight lines between two clicked points. Yeah, that's good. It's better for me. It looks, it looks cleaner. And I will do the same thing over there. So I will take this point and I will place it over to this side. Increase the flow. Like that. The good thing is that this is completely non-destructive, so you can 
undo everything that you do, everything, every single step can be undone. Just, you know, take out the layer and you're good. Okay. Paint it in very carefully. Try to avoid pattern. It's a classic Photoshop fail, I think. You see this in advertising all the time. Patterns, stamps, patterns from the stamp tool, some hair that has been removed or some objects that have been removed and there is like, you see the, the traces of the stamp tool. Uh, and I always think when I see this, ah, oh, maybe this was a low budget project. <laughs> this is, this is okay. When I think about it, uh, this, is, well, this one is a little bit heavy, right? This reflection here could be a little bit less intense. Let's create another curve. And I go into the channel, into these three channels. I do this with Alt, 3, 4, and 5. In these channels, I can control the colors as well. So if I take this one down, for example, the image gets yellow because I take down the blues in the brightness. And if I take down this one and then I go over to the green channel and I take down this one a bit, I get a nice golden tone, which I then can apply to this area in order to make it darker. So now you go into the mask and hit Control I, and now you paint this color into this area. And you see, of course we need a mask. So yeah, as you see, this color seems to be quite fitting. Maybe a little bit less red. So again, go to green and increase it a bit more. And the same you need for this area down there. But I don't think that I need to colorize it. I just take it down a bit. Layer mask and paint it in. Yeah, that's good enough. Right. And of course, it might make sense to paint this also on this upper part. So the color is similar. So for now, I would say I also want to have a nice color look. For that, I go on a layer that is at the top and I insert a curve. And I go into the blue channel, which is Alt and 5. And I raise up this bottom handle a little bit. until the black starts to become a bit bluish. And then I take down the right a little bit to give more of a golden tint. Yeah, that starts to look better. It is very subtle, but it, it makes, it, it adds a lot to this image. And I also insert another curves. I, I only need curves actually. And what is also very nice, um, if you want to have this filmic look, you take this handle down there and pull it up a bit. But not not up, but towards the this part, like straight towards this part and until the black is cut away. Like this is very extreme. But just to make clear what I mean, I cut away the black with this technique. So I raise it a bit and it gives it a bit of a of a filmic look, which I like very much and which is used in advertising quite a lot. So you can, I, I leave it, I think this is okay. Can also take this down, but I don't like it very much. I think it's okay if it is up there. So I think this is good. This is really good. We could insert a color balance. pull this um, handle over to the red side and this to the yellow side. Then hit Control I. And then you paint these, this information into 
our golden tones with white and make them a little bit more goldish. <laughs> More flow. Ah. It gives just it gives it just more simply more power. Yeah. With Alt and click on the layer mask, you see what you've done. And for me that is okay. Just take care that you don't paint too much into the, the black areas so you don't mess up the color. One final stroke will be, I want to have a little bit of depth of field that makes it even better. So take our, our mist path and now I will take all these la layers together to one layer. In order to do that, I select everything except for the mist path and I'm duplicating them. Right click, duplicate layers. And now right click and merge layers, great. And now I alt click on the little eye. I only have this. And now hold down control, alt, shift and two in order to load a selection. And then you go to the channels and you add a new channel. And now you insert this selection with control and backspace. That's the way how you, how you get this selection into an alpha channel. You need this alpha channel for the next step. Now you can click Alt on this little eye again, Control D to deselect everything. And now you click on the color balance. And now uh, yeah, it may, may be a good idea to uh, duplicate it. So hit Control J. And now you go into filter, lens blur. Very good. And in the source, you choose our alpha mask. And now you click on this point. And if you have done everything right, <laughs> we should see a little bit of depth of field. I hope so. Radius, increase the radius. Yeah, it works. That's good. That is very good. Increase the radius. And then you, you find yourself a way or a point that you want to highlight. I would say this one is the best point to highlight. A bit of depth of field, but it's almost too much. I would reduce it to maybe 60. Or maybe even less, 50. Zero. Just a bit, not too much. Yep, that's okay. One thing that is very good. Another thing, I hit Control J again. Another thing is you can add a little bit of uh, lens correction. We can add chromatic aberration, go to custom, and then you say fix, where, whereas fix green magenta, for example, you can reduce this. This is not really fixing it, but it's making it worse, of course, but we want to have some chromatic aberration. Sometimes it gives a bit more realism to the scene. Mm, no. Ah, here you can see it. Oh, that's that's too much. I think red cyan is better. Red cyan. Yeah, maybe like this. It's okay. See a little bit of a blue. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I like it. Apply this. Also, what you could do is one final um, camera raw filter. Sometimes it's easier to do it that way. Sharpening, could do a sharpening. Just check if you have, maybe I like it if the temperature goes a little bit down, minus four. Get a bit brighter, a bit more contrast. Increase the highlights this time. And a bit of clarity. 
And what also is very interesting, go to distortion, optics distortion, and do this, like minus five. You know, this is uh, like an optical um, distortion, like from your lens, as if it has been photographed. And this also tricks the eye a bit because a render is completely straight, like 100%. But with this simple method, like minus three is enough to trick the eye a bit to give the um, the illusion that this might have been a photo. Okay, so that is good. Think, yeah, this is very, very good. I mean, this is amazing. This is a render. Yeah, it is a rendered image. Uh, with a little bit of tweaking in Photoshop. Wow, you can make this look like a photo. Awesome. I hope you like this tutorial. Please feel free to check out the advanced light maps. I think, them very, uh, think they are very useful. And of course, it is my product. And if you buy it, you would support me as an artist, my family, my wife, and my kids. And I would be very grateful for that. Thank you. But I also want to help you to become a better 3D artist with your products. And I hope this tutorial was very helpful for you. Please be so kind as to like this video and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment if you found this helpful, if you followed through, and also if you have any questions or you think that I um, explained something not in a good way or you did not understand what I was doing, this would also be very helpful for me in order to increase the quality of my tutorials that I put out there. Please tell me if it is helpful. And yeah, I hope to see you next time and bye-bye.